Page 87, Bells of Milan. On page 86, they're identifying first aversion triads. I personally see no value in that at all, but they're doing it. If you want to go through it, you go right ahead. To me, I don't see how it helps. You're going to get used to seeing those patterns of notes in the music, and you'll just do it. Whether it's first, second, or third of others, and whatever it is, I really don't care. It's just, uh, if you're into improvising or composing, then you got to get in a little more deeply, because there's times when you'll want to use a certain inversion in a certain situation, I guess. I don't, but this, this, otherwise, I don't care. If you have any questions about anything on page 86, let me know. They're just using first aversion triads. Okay. To me, it's no big deal. Let's talk about what's going on in Milan here. I look it over, it's a page long, treble bass cliff, no sharps or flats in the key signature. So look at the last measure, we're in C major, we're in C major. Make sure you're doing the C major scale. Uh, have we introduced minors yet? Because I can't remember anymore. If we're doing minor scales also, make sure you do the A minor scale also. 4-4 four, four time signature, and I don't really see any problems with rhythm. We've just got all these first aversion chords going. So in the right hand, you see that you have a B, a B, and a G, and it's the same pattern going down. This whole thing, it looks like, is all first aversion. It's all first aversion. So let's talk a little bit about technique, like at the beginning. These chords are going down, playing three notes at the same time, more or less. I'm trying to. But you're aiming three fingers. Uh, what? It's hard enough to aim one finger. Well, what I do when it's the same pattern like this, the hand's in the same physical sh pattern, is I simply leave the hand there in that pattern, and I aim one finger, and let the other fingers just go along. For instance, I can aim the thumb here, and if I hold that hand in that pattern, the other fingers should behave themselves. But I'm concentrating on the thumb. Now you should be able to aim any finger, so practice with the middle finger. So it's here. Uh, or the top, the little. So most of the time in music when I get this, I will aim whichever finger has the melody. And a lot of times in the right hand, it's the little finger gets the melody. So you have aim that. So I'm just concentrating on one finger, and I'm holding my hand in that position and letting them go. There's a danger to this, so let's talk about the danger. You're going to want to hold your hand in that position, and in order to do that, you're going to tense up. But you don't want to move. No, i got to hold this position. No. So to get around that is flex at the wrist on each of these. Hold the arm still, and you play these with the wrist. You can't get really tense if you're flexing the wrist. It doesn't work. So it's here, here. You don't have to come way up. I'm exaggerating so you can see them. That's here, here. Flex at the wrist. Take a look at uh, measure seven. We got the scale going up here. Which finger you aim? I don't care. I'm aiming the little finger here, and I'm just doing this on it. Just, you don't have to go that fast, but the idea, the technique is there. Look at measure 13. Here we go. Here, so just aim one finger and take it as slow as you need to. And eventually you get to where you can hold that position and stay relaxed at the same time. It's amazing. But it takes a little time to get there. But this is the technique I'm urging you to use, and it, it'll take a while to get it. But keep at it, it comes. It comes in handy in a lot of pieces. Left hand's just got these things stretch out. Measure five, you're here, thumb. And that, yeah. Now, measure eight, you're here, and then measure nine, you just lift up and come up. Yeah. And you do 
do it again. And that last chord at the end, well, what is it? Spell it out. It's a G, an A, a C, and an E. And that's what it is. So you just learn it. Hooked up. Here, try and get them down at the same time. Just lowering the whole hand down. Let the wrist collapse a little bit. Don't tense up. So we put them together. Tricky part there measures five and six is you have a black key. So you have to adjust that finger just a little bit on those and then come down for those. You'll find you can make those little adjustments pretty easily eventually. So once I have the hands working together more or less, then I'll think about the articulation. And these staccatos are going to help because you're going to on the key and you're bouncing off in, at the wrist here. So, all the way through. And then the dynamics. Well, I don't know about dynamics. Uh, normally bells, we're talking church bells or whatever. You don't usually get louds and softs. They just ring out. But we can do some dynamics, I suppose. Moderately loud. It's going to be both hands here. Mezzo forte is sort of loud. Measure three, hairpin to come down. Each one a little softer. How soft? Don't care. Just come down. And then a measure five, you're going to be moderately soft. So if you want to come down to moderately soft, that's fine. But you could come down to soft on measure four if you wanted to. Because you got two beats of rest to recover to go to measure five and moderately soft. Now you're going to go up to moderately loud here in measure seven. You have to plan this out or you'll be moderately loud at the beginning of measure eight. So we have to figure it out. It, it's kind of hard to do one note at a time because you, there's too many notes. So we maybe every two notes go up just a hair, a little louder, a little louder. And I say I'm too loud. That's, uh, I just want to go up to moderately loud. I could go up to loud and then come down to moderately loud on measure nine, but in, I think in this case you just want to go up to moderate, you're going to lead into it. It leads into it. It leads into it. So I just want to go up to moderately loud. Well, I'm moderately soft on measure seven. So I'm going to do the whole measure moderately soft. I'm going to go up a little bit. A little more. So I save most of my crescendo toward the end. You see, when you do a crescendo or decrescendo, it's not a straight line. It's a little bit, and then toward the end of it, you come up. Or, or whatever. You, do, you make most of your change toward the end of it. So this first part, I'm not changing hardly at all, if at all. It's toward the end I'm coming up, so it's here. And then measure 13, this is the softest part so far. And then you're going to go up to moderately soft. So just a little bit. It's like every two beats go up just a hair. A little higher. Wow. Moderately soft. Yeah. That's interpretation. See if you can get into where you can feel the dynamics. In my opinion, that last measure. This chord should be very soft. I want to hear that. Don't drown it out. Yeah. As far as the speed goes, what's well, slowly, but we need the practice. So this is good. Don't go too slow because that doesn't work on piano. That just ugh. piano's too percussive. It needs to flow, but it's a slow flow. No. There's no speed per se, it's a, it's a one, two, two, however fast that is, it's around 60 on the metronome, I guess, or something, or 70 or something, I don't know. 
slow. So keep it all the same speed. Now they've added a pedal. I don't know that I like the idea of the way you're, they're using the pedal, but let's talk about it because we can experiment and explore what can the pedal do? How can it help us here? Or do we need it at all? They're showing pedaling on the second measure. So I'm going to push the nose down first and then the pedal. I'm going to lift the pedal right after I play the C in the next measure. I'm connecting them. So the first line like that is this. So forth. And that's how they're using the pedal throughout. That's okay. There's nothing wrong with it. They're coloring the long notes. And that's as lot we do this a lot in piano where we have notes held out. Because you play it, it just it just dies away. But if you add the overtones and add a little bit of color, it adds a little bit. It sounds different. So a lot of times in piano we will pedal longer held notes. If we pedal the first measure, because bells just ring out. They don't they don't go staccato, they ring out. It's more like bells because they just blur all over. But you lose the staccato if you do that. But it's another way of interpreting it because it's a different effect. Depends on the effect you're after. Try the whole thing with one pedal through the hole. Just push it down at the beginning and lift it up at the end. Just smear it all together because that's what bells would do. on that one because of the way it's written. But nevertheless, that has more of an effect on bells. We can change the pedal occasionally to kind of help clear it out. For instance, I can change approximately every beat or, or every measure or two at the beginning. Change here. Change here. up to you. You have to experiment with it and what are the different effects the pedal is having to what you're doing. Listen very carefully. As far as this lesson goes, I'm just going to pedal it the way they're showing. You can pedal it however you see fit or you and your teacher can explore the possibilities. me please you do it however you choose to do it you'll have to go that fast you can go slower than that that may have been a little too fast I tend to play things too fast anyway let's play this together very slowly to check to see if we more or less have the right chords and if it's hard to hear when you're playing so many notes at one time I'm gonna leave out the pedal because you can hear it better without pedal so I'll give us four counts Oh, oh, I'm not doing the louds and softs either, so just playing the notes, but I'll do the staccato. One, two, ready, go. One, two, three, four. Two, three. 